Okay. Today, let me talk about the ternary operator or conditional operators. Okay. The, it sounds maybe cryptic, but basically it is a very handy operator. It is one of my favorites. Now, what it does is it actually checks for a condition and then gives or returns a value. This is what it does. Now, let's see the general syntax of this particular operator. First of all, you can see over here, this is the first operand, that is the condition, followed by the value it is going to return in case the condition happens to be true, followed by the statement it is going to return in case the condition is false. Now note that you have a question mark to indicate that the statement after it gets executed. In other words, it gets returned or given if the condition happens to be true. And the colon is to indicate that it's going to return this value represented by return to if the condition given out here happens to be false. Now, since this particular statement is going to return a value, uh, what you can do is, uh, you can prefer either to store it into a variable. You can see I have written it out here. You can either store it into a variable or you can simply display it using the usual system.out.print or system.out.println statement or simply return it. Now, when I talk about the return statement, return statement means uh, this is actually related to methods or functions, which we are going to cover later on. Now, look at this structure, which I've done over here. Since this particular statement will either return a value if the condition happens to be true, in this case, return one, and if the condition happens to be false, it's going to return return two. You need to store it into a variable. That means you need to have a variable out here to accept the value. Now this time, the variable should be of same data type or a compatible data type. What I mean by this is, if the value which is being returned, that is if return one and return two are of int type, so the variable where you are going to store it should also be of integer type. If one is long, the other is int, it should be stored in long type because long variable can accept both long as well as integer. So you need to keep that in mind. Now, here is another example, which I'm going to talk about. Here you can see a real example where I'm checking for two variables, which is greater. You can see over here, if the value of A happens to be greater than B, then it jumps to the statement after the question mark and here you can see 15 is being assigned to the variable C. Otherwise, the value 25 is being assigned to the variable C. Very simple out here. Uh, note that this parenthesis which I have given uh, around the condition, it is not necessary. You may provide this parenthesis or you may not provide this parenthesis. It still works fine. Now, the corresponding if-else statement which you can see over here I have written uh, it is simply a substitute of this particular conditional operation or ternary operator application. Here, what happens if the value of A is greater than B, then 15 is assigned to C. Otherwise, the value 25 is assigned to C. So look at this, how simply this can be done. And now, this is another example where instead of storing the... Uh, value into a variable, what I'm doing is I'm going to display the value. Now here you see what is happening. If the value of A is greater than 80, then it jumps to the statement after the question mark. In this case, you have a string with the word good inside it. So the word good gets displayed out here because of the system.out.println statement. Now in case the condition is false, that is if it is either less than or equal to 80, it jumps to the statement after the colon. And here we have a string which is bad enclosed within quotes it gets printed so if the condition is true that is greater than 80 it displays good otherwise it displays bad look at the statement how simply it can be done 
In fact, uh, had we tried it using the if else statement, we would have required this condition to be uh, written along with that system dot out dot println should have been written twice one for good one for once for bad now this is a real example where we are going to accept a number and check whether it is positive negative or zero this is a very interesting problem because you see uh, what we are going to do is we are going to accept a value this is a parameterized in input i believe you remember and here what we are doing is we are checking whether the value of that particular variable that is in our case a happens to be greater than zero or not. If it happens to be greater than zero, so the word positive gets printed. Now, if it is not greater than zero, there are two situations. Either it is less than zero or it is equal to zero. So what happens is in the else part, we once again put an if that is else if statement to check whether the number is less than zero or not. If the number is less than zero, fine, displays the word negative. And if it is not even negative, what happens is it directly jumps to the else part and displays zero or neutral. Look at the number of statements which is being used out here. Now the corresponding system.out.println statement, look at this entire if else if else group has been replaced by a single system.out.println statement. Look at the way it is being done. If A is greater than 0, let's interpret it. If A is greater than 0, that means it will directly jump to the statement after the question mark and it prints the word positive. However, if the value of A is not greater than 0, it directly jumps to the statement after the colon. And here you see, within this entire parenthesis, I put one more conditional operator to check whether the number is negative or not. If the number happens to be negative, it displays the word negative. Otherwise, it displays zero or neutral. Now, this parenthesis which I have given in case it is not positive is just for brevity. It is not necessary. Rather, it is optional. This is for you to understand. Uh, now, this is another example where we take a number as input and then check whether it is a two-digit number or not. There is nothing much in this program. It is the usual thing which you have learned while using the if-else statement. Here, what you can see is I'm taking a number as input and then I'm checking whether it is a two-digit number or not. And how do we check that? If it happens to be greater than or equal to 10 and if it happens to be less than or equal to 99, there's no doubt regarding it that it must be a two-digit number. And if this condition is not true, it will display not a two-digit number. What is important is why I had provided this program is I just wanted to show you that apart from the relational operators that is the greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to which you have learned earlier we can also use logical operator that is and or and not inside the condition of the ternary operator. Okay. Now let me discuss about the switch case statement. Uh, switch case statement is another type of conditional structure apart from what you had learned earlier that is if if else if uh, the ternary operator so apart from those statements switch case is another statement rather you can call it it's a block block means a group of statement enclosed with an opening and closing brace that's a block in java so switch case has its own block now this block consists of several case blocks. Now what actually happens is with the switch it checks for the value of a variable or an expression and it checks whether the expression or the value of the variable matches with any of these successive cases or not. If it matches the statements within the case block gets executed. So therefore, the switch case statement is also called multiple branching statement because depending upon the value of a variable, it can branch to any of these cases. Now, before getting deeper into the switch case statement, uh, let, let us see the syntax of it. Now, this is the syntax of the switch case statement. Here you can see we have a switch statement followed by an expression. Now, this expression uh, should result in an integer or a character data type because switch works only with integers or character nothing else other than that so this expression it may also be a variable 
should result in an integer or constant and that value should be written in the constant part here you can see we have case constant 1 case constant 2 case constant 3 and then subsequent cases followed by the last constant and followed by the default block now what actually happens is if the value of the expression or the constant matches with any of these constants so what happens the statement within that key statements gets executed until it finds the break statement. Now, if none of the constants matches with the value of the expression, it directly jumps to the default block and executes the statements in the default block and exits from the switch block. Now, one must remember the usage of the break statement. The break statement is used to ensure that after executing the statements within a case it should exit from the switch block and if the break statement is missing whatsoever may be the case the statements within that case also gets executed one after the other until it finds a break statement or it ends the switch block now let us see an example related to the switch case statement now here this is a very interesting example here we have an if else if group of statements where the value of a is being checked whether it is 1, 2 or 3 or not and the corresponding uh, word or rather the number word is being displayed. Here you can see if the value of a is 1 it's going to display the word 1 or any 1. If the value of a is 2, it directly jumps to over here and it's going to display the word 2. If it is 3, it's going to display the word 3. If it is neither 1, 2 or 3, it directly jumps to the else part and displays not 1, 2 or 3. Now look at the corresponding switch case statement. Here we have switch A. Uh, I had said you previously that if the expression is an integer, or a character only then it is going to work so here the value of a must be an integer please remember that and it may be an expression or a variable it doesn't matter here what happens is if the value of a is 1 represented by case 1 then what happens it does exactly the same thing it displays the word any one followed by the break statement now this is very important the break statement if the value of a is 2 so case 1 do not gets executed, it goes to case 2 and displays the word TWO2. In case the value of A is 3, directly jumps to case 3 and displays the word 3. If it is any value other than 1, 2 or 3, say for example, if the user gives the value of A as 15, it directly jumps to the default block and displays not 1, 2 or 3. L look at the simplicity of the usage of switch case statement. And now this is a very interesting topic. What happens when break is missing in a case block? Now, I already said if the break statement is missing in a case block, the subsequent statements in the remaining case block gets executed until it finds a break statement or it exists from the switch block. Here you can see that I have not given the break statement after case 1 and case 2. You can see that. Now, let us see what actually happens if the break statement is missing. Now, here, if the value of A is 1, what do you think is the output? Unlike the previous situation where it is just displayed 1, it's not going to happen out here because the break statement is missing. You can see over there in case 1, it is not ending with the break statement. So, what actually happens is, it's going to display the word 1 case 2 it's not going to check for that it's going to display the next statement inside this case and it is not even going to wait after that or come out of the switch block It's going to display the word 3 and then it exits from the switch block so the corresponding output is 1 2 and 3 if the value of a is 1 because the break statement is missing out there in case the value of a is 2 uh, what do you think is the output? The output is, once again, I believe you can guess. 
that since the break statement is missing, it first starts from case 2. No doubt regarding it because if the value of A is 2, case 1 do not get executed. It directly jumps to case 2 and displays the word TWO2. And since the break statement is missing, irrespective of the remaining cases, it executes the statement after it. So in that case, it displays the word 3 and then exit from the switch block. So the output will be 2 and 3. In case the value of A is 3, now this is pretty simple. It is same as the previous case. It is directly going to jump to case 3 and display the word 3. And this time we have a break statement. So there is no other possibility of getting any other output apart from the word 3. Now in case the value of A is 4. Now you can see none of these cases are matching. So what happens is, it directly jumps to the default block and executes the statement not 1, 2 or 3. Hence the output is not 1, 2 or 3. Now you can see the problem if the break statement is missing. This is technically in Java called fall through. Fall through is an occurrence uh, which happens because of a missing break in a case statement. What actually happens? The remaining statements in the other case blocks gets executed. That is what happens with the fall through. That is in case you do not have a break, it falls through the remaining cases. Having said that, uh, let us see a more practical example out here. You can see what I'm going to do out here in this particular program is I'm going to input a day number from 1 to 7 and print corresponding weekday. For example, if the day number entered by the user is 1, it's going to display Sunday. If it is 2, it's going to display Monday, 3, Tuesday, like that successive weekdays. Here I have used the scanner class you can see over there, followed by a message to the user, enter a day number from 1 to 7. And the value which is entered by the user using sc.nextint, I believe you remember, this is entered into the variable day number. Now, switch day number. So here the expression is day number. That is the variable day number. In case the value of day number is 1, it's going to definitely display Sunday followed by the break. If day number is 4, then directly jumps to case 4 and displays Wednesday followed by break. If the user gives any other value other than 1 to 7, it directly jumps to the default block and displays invalid value followed by the break. Remember, putting a break at the end of the default, is it is not necessary. It is completely optional because in any case, it's going to exit the switch block. Just one more point I would like you to remember is it is not necessary that the case should be always starting from 1. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, like this example or the previous examples which I had shown. It can be starting from any number and moreover, it can be in any order. It need not be in ascending order. In fact, even the default block can be at the top and the case 1 can be at the bottom. It doesn't matter. But be careful with the break statement. Otherwise, you understand the fall through happens. Now, let me talk about this example, which is actually a menu driven program. The word menu driven program is technically used to tell that when the program gets executed, first of all, the user will be presented with a menu, giving you options to do a certain job. And depending upon the choice of the user, a particular task is executed. Basically, when it comes to the programmer's part, he writes every possible uh, task which that particular program can do. But the user has a choice to execute just one option. Now, let's see what this particular program is doing. In this program, the user enters two integers and then it is going to present you with a menu option where the user gets a choice to add these two integers or subtract the two integers or multiply the two integers. And after the user has selected the choice, it goes on to perform exactly that particular task. Now, here you see, let's go deeper into the program. Here you can see, first of all, it accepts two integers inside the two variables a and b. And then this entire part 
is the menu option. You can see I've written out their menu followed by the first menu option one to add the integers. That particular number is to tell the user that you have to enter one to add the two integers which you had just input from the terminal window. In case uh, he inputs two, these two integers which was entered inside A and B will be subtracted. Similarly, if he enters three, those two integers are going to get multiplied. Followed by enter your choice. Now this is the message which the computer is going to give it to the user for the user to enter a value from one to three. So either one or two or three. And you all know by now what is the meaning of one, two and three. One is to add the two integers, two is to subtract and three is to multiply the two integers. This choice is taken into a variable named ch. Now here you can see switch ch. ch is the expression, the switch expression. Now if the value of ch is one, these two integers which was entered by the user that is a and b gets added and stored in c and ultimately displayed followed by the break. Remember the fall through situation. Now, if the user enters 2, it directly jumps to the case 2 block and here a bit of ternary operator usage. You can see what I am doing is I am subtracting the smaller number from the larger number and storing it into the variable C and ultimately showing the difference followed by the break. In case the user enters 3, it directly jumps to the case 3 block and multiplies the two integer and display their product. Now, there may be a situation where the user by mistake or on purpose do not enter a value from 1 to 3. That is in case he enters 4 or 5 or any other value other than 1, 2 or 3, it directly jumps to the else uh, in the, uh, it directly jumps to the default block and displays wrong choice. Type 1, 2 or 3. That's a message, a warning message given to the user to understand that he is supposed to enter just three values. That is 1, 2 or 3. Okay. Now let's see how this particular menu driven program uh, works. Let me right click over here and click on the point menu function. Uh, so you can see the terminal window has opened up and at the very beginning it asks me enter two integers and here you can see the input box where the user can input a value. Okay let me input 15 followed by pressing the enter key. Now let me input say 13. 13 followed by the enter key. Now see the computer presents me with a list of menu options. That is one to add the two integers, two to subtract the integers, three to multiply the integers. Okay, uh, let's try three to multiply the two, uh, three, the two integers. So once again, three I'm inputting inside the input box followed by the enter key being pressed okay now you can see it's displaying me the product of the two integers now let me execute the program once again let me enter two integers Okay, once again the menu option, let me enter 1, that is we are going to add these two numbers and it is displaying me the sum. Okay, now let me run this program once again, let me close this terminal window. Once again, uh, execute the void main, again two integers, say for example 36 and... 451 okay once again the menu is being presented let me input 2 uh, that is it's going to subtract the two integers so here you can see it's displaying the difference between the two integers now okay we'll close this terminal window okay, once again execute this okay give two numbers 15 and say 23 okay let me make a mistake by purpose that is I'm not going to give a choice that is 1 2 or 3 let me give 6 let's see what happens see 
it gives you the message wrong choice type 1 2 or 3 this is because of the default block being executed